we're looking at conditional statements. When we speak of conditional statements, we're actually talking about if P then Q. So it is that if then statement where the phrase that comes after the if is our hypothesis and the phrase that comes after the then is our conclusion. So if my hypothesis, then that's the conclusion. In terms of symbolism, um, we would say that, hey, if P, then Q. What it means then is that P implies Q. All right, so P implies Q. So let us see some key terms that we will come across as we go. We're gonna come across uh, our conditional statement, which is the original statement, if P then Q. We will come across what is called our converse, which is to switch our hypothesis and the conclusion. So it reads, if Q then P. We'll come across our inverse statement. And remember, this symbol here is our negation. So this is a negation. And what that means, it means not, right? So for example, in our inverse, it's going to be reading, if not P, then not Q. Because this symbol here is the negative of the original statement. Now, the contrapositive, as you could see, it is actually the negation of the converse, basically, right? So basically, we're going to flip around our original statement that becomes the converse and then we're going to negate that so it reads if not q then not p right so that is our contrapositive um let us just quickly take some notes here before we get into stuff the converse and the inverse they do have the same true value so what it means if the converse is true the inverse is true if the converse is false, the inverse will be false. They have the same true value. The conditional statement and the contrapositive, they do have the same true value as well. What does that mean? If my conditional statement is a false statement, then my, con my contrapositive will also be false. If the conditional statement is true, the contrapositive will be true. Now, so this says, so an example, it says, if today is Monday, then yesterday was Sunday. So this is my conditional statement. What is my hypothesis? Remember that my hypothesis comes right after the if. It doesn't include the if. So my hypothesis will read, today is Monday. That's my hypothesis, right? So my conclusion comes after the then. So then my conclusion is yesterday was Sunday. So my conclusion is yesterday was Sunday. Right? Yesterday was Sunday. Let's take a look at example two. Example 2 says, if x equal 5, then 2x equal 10. What is my hypothesis? My hypothesis is x equal 5. What is my conclusion? The conclusion comes after then, so it is 2x equal 10. All right. Now, let's take a look at example three. Example three says, if x equals six, then x squared equals 36. My hypothesis is x equals six. What is my conclusion? Okay, you got it. It is x squared equals 36. All right. Now, let's look on other forms of the idea. 
what we're going to do is that we're going to take this statement and we're going to rewrite it in if then statement. It says here that x equal to 5 implies that to 3x plus 2 equal negative 30. So remember that we have p implies q really means that if p then q, right? So it's going to be if, so in this case we're looking at if x is equal to negative 5, then 3x plus 2 is negative 30. So we just rewrote this idea in our if-then form. What is my hypothesis? Again, the hypothesis will always be the statement after the if. So it is going to be x is equal to negative 5. My conclusion will be this part that says 3x plus 2 is negative 30. All right? So there we have that. Now, let's take a look on this idea here. So we're going to bring in the converse in this idea just to see what it is saying. So again, we're going back to our statement that says, if today is Monday, then yesterday was Sunday. My hypothesis will be after the if. So it is today is Monday. Today is Monday. So what's the conclusion? Well, yesterday was Sunday. So we're going to write that. So yesterday was Sunday. Now, what's going to be my converse here? My converse is when I'm going to take my original statement here, if P, then Q, and I'm going to turn things around. So I'm going to let it be if Q, then P. So what it really means then, I'm going to be switching my hypothesis and my conclusion. So let us rewrite this. So it's going to read if yesterday, so this, this was my original conclusion. So if yesterday was Sunday, Then, today is Monday, all right? So you could see here in my, concept, in my converse, I switched my argument. So my conclusion becomes my hypothesis and my hypothesis becomes my conclusion. So you could see here, this is the conditional statement that we had. And then this becomes my converse statement right here. Now, so as you could see here, um, let's take a look. Is this true though? Is this true? Let's take a look if this statement is true. Of course it is true. Because um, this first statement, if today is Monday, then yesterday was Sunday. We agree that this original statement here is true. This is true. Now let's take a look at our converse. The converse says, if yesterday was Sunday, then, okay, that's it then, my bad. If yesterday was Sunday, then today is Monday. Now, is that true? Is that true? Yes, it is. So here it is that we have um, a case where our our condition was true and the converse is also true. So what happened when we have this case? Well, we'll talk about it. A, uh, we'll talk about it soon. We actually have what is called a biconditional statement that we can create, but let us get into that soon. We'll get into that soon. Now, we're saying here that, listen, not all converse will be true. Our converse just now was true because both statements were true. Let's take a look at this statement here. So this one that we're looking at here, all 
All right, we're looking at this one. So this is what it says here. It says, if x is equal to 6, then x squared is equal to 36. I agree that this is true. So what's my hypothesis? x is equal to 6. I'm going to conclude then here that x squared is 36. And that's true, right? What is my converse? I'm going to have to switch the ideas now. So I'm going to say if x squared is equal to 36, then x is equal to 6. Now, is this converse true? Let's think about it. Well, it's false. Right? So in my mind, this is not true. Why? So if it is not true, then we should be able to provide a counterexample to that argument, right? So if it is not true, can I find another value for x other than 6 that I could square it and get 36? Of course, if I square negative 6, I will still get 36. So that means that this statement is not true because um, it is not just 6 I need to square to get 36. I could square other things that would have given me 36. All right. When we talk about a biconditional statement, it's going to be one of those statements. Conditional statement was correct as well as my converse. So let us take a look at this statement that we have. It, it reads, it says, if an angle is a right angle, then it measures 90 degrees. Well, we agree with that. Then. If an angle is right angle, then it measures 90 degrees. Now, this is the condition. So I'm going to take the converse of it. I'm going to write it beneath. Now, for the converse, I'm going to say if an angle... So I'm going to say, if an angle measures 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. Well, this is correct as well. Because if an angle measures 90 degrees, we classify it as a right angle. So whenever my converse and my conditional statements are true, we have what is called a biconditional statement because we're able to get them going both ways. For example, P implies Q as well as Q implies P. So with the double arrow, I simply could say P implies Q as well as Q implies P. So notice that we have a double arrow here. That means we could go in both directions, which the prefix by refers to. Two can go both ways. Now, how do we write a biconditional statement? Whenever we're going to write a biconditional statement, we will write it based on the conditional statement, not the converse. We're going to go back to the conditional statement, and we're going to remove, we're going to remove, we're going to get rid of, the if, and then we're going to replace then with if and only if. So I'm going to put IFF here. Right? So we get rid of our if, and then we replace the then with IFF, which means if and only if. So let me write what it is now. So it's going to be, it's going to, this is going to be if. It's going to be said an angle is a right angle and now I'm going to say if and only if it measures 90 degrees so that's our biconditional statement we remove the if from the conditional statement and we replace the then with if and only if and so our biconditional statement is like what we'd use to formulate definitions and stuff like that. See you next time.